Okay, Catelyn, first of all, here is some feedback on writing task one. As you can see, what I've done is I've put the original question on the screen uh, here, and on the left-hand side, I've put your answer. Uh, very good of you to do your answer, write your answer on an actual sample writing answer sheet for both task one and task two, because uh, that's what you get in the exam. And it's also good for me to see your handwriting, because that needs to be legible. Uh, able to be able to read by the um, person marking. And just a reminder before we go into your answer, for task one you ha there are four criteria and they are equally weighted. So uh, you, the first criteria is on task achievement, then you have coherence and cohesion, then you have lexical resources, your use of vocabulary, and grammatical range and accuracy. Okay, so with any task one, line chart, bar chart, pie chart, anything that has graphical representation, even a table, we're going to have an introduction, sen introductory sentence which tells us what does this line chart or pie chart or table, what does it show, what does it illustrate. And we can keep it simple for the first uh, sentence. We're just going to do a basic introduction. In this case, we're, we've got both a line chart and a table. So we look at that those that information together so we talk about the graph and table the line graph and table as opposed to the line graph and the table we don't need to introduce with a, a definitive article for table because we're looking at them together the line graph and table give information on the average so that's accurate you could have added that there's three cities I mean it does say three major cities in here um, so I would have put annual sunshine in three uh, major cities uh, and then a colon maybe because that's the way you would introduce uh, a list of things uh, three major cities colon London New York and Sydney so that's punctuation uh, accuracy if you like once we move on from our past introduction we need to use synonyms for talking about the information so we're not going to say the same words we're not going to keep using the word cities we're not going to use keep using the word sunshine uh, we're not going to use um, temperature every time we're going to mix up our language use synonyms for to, for words that mean the same thing the second paragraph always should look at the overall picture so in this case we're looking at the overall features what are the main features what's obvious what's what's clear what are the main differences what are the main features uh, about these three cities uh, in terms of you know when when are when when is the temperature highest when is the temperature lowest uh, so we're looking at superlatives um, the most the least uh, the greatest uh, the longest um, it's quite correct to talk about, or is correct to talk about the fact this is over the whole year, so it is annual, but we only got the word annual down here in terms of the total hours of sunshine. So we have the temperatures broken down into 12 sections by, uh, by, by month of the year, and then we have a total number of hours uh, below as a separate thing. And we could interact with these two, so we could talk about the fact that uh, New York and London, being northern hemisphere cities, are probably going to have more sunshine during the warmer months. Uh, but it's not a guarantee because London has a lot less sunshine over the whole year than New York. In fact, it's about half as much, which suggests that New York retains sunshine uh, throughout other parts of the years. However, I'm starting to talk about things that we don't necessarily know for sure. We can only use the information that we can see on the screen. So we mustn't, in task one, start to give us give our bring in our own knowledge and our own reasons that oh well we know that New York has sunshine throughout January and February. Therefore, this is why this is figure. We just reflect on the fact that this is a high figure, even higher than Sydney, which we would expect through these months, especially winter months, being a southern hemisphere city uh, in Australia to have a lot more sunshine. Okay, so in your second paragraph, you this is fine. You've uh, talked about some major features uh, and you've pulled out that New York and London, uh, the temperatures are higher in what is the summer for them, whereas uh, in Sydney it's lower because that's going through a winter. And then uh, we could say something like, but it's vice versa, or you said the opposite. Uh, another word we could use instead of opposite would be vice versa. But use opposite, that's fine. Uh, but maybe later you could talk about um, a situation that uh, we could talk about think, words like conversely, or on the other hand, to show a comparison between what are northern hemisphere cities, London, New York, New York, who have their summer through June, July, August, and Sydney, which is a southern hemisphere city, which has its higher temperatures around December, January, and February. Now, 
a little piece of advice here. If you have a fictional city or country or lists of you know, information in task one that is clearly a fictional place and not a country or a country you don't know about, cities you don't know about, places, then um, you can't bring in knowledge about the cities because they're not real. However, if you have real cities, real countries, uh, then you can bring a little bit of your knowledge in that you know, or I know, and I hope you would know, that London and New York are northern hemisphere cities, so they're above the equator, far above the equator, and Sydney being in Australia is much more, it's a southern uh, hemisphere city, so they're going to have opposite, almost opposite temperatures, you know, at different times of the year, and then there'll be around the equinox period, sort of May, uh, March period and October period, they may be a bit closer because that's the sort of change over time when uh, they have an equal amount of, of, of temperature. However, with our table, uh, this is quite different because although London and New York are both northern hemisphere cities, there's a huge discrepancy, and there's a word you could use, a discrepancy, a difference. Instead of saying huge difference, we could say discrepancy. Lovely high level uh, IELTS 7 plus uh, 7.5 language to describe this massive difference between the num total number of hours of sunshine in two northern hemisphere cities. Yes, we'd expect Sydney to have uh, a lot of sunshine. It does. I think we know that it does. Um, and it's similar to New York. However, we could look at this drastic difference. So I would highlight the big difference in sunshine here. You do say that, East. You say New York sees the most sunshine, while sunshine leads, sees the least. But we could be more descriptive in our language. You use better adjectives to describe the difference. You know, huge discrepancy between New York and London, despite them both being Northern Hemisphere cities. That would get you a 7.58 in, in, in task one. OK, in London, the average temperature in January is just below 10. So now we're going into the de details. So this is what I always advise students is after that introduction, after that overall paragraph, we, we drill down and we look at specific features. We, we pick out, and this is when we need to accurately, accurately, accurate, and this is... And this is when we need to accurately represent what is on the line chart. So you said that um, the temperature in London is just below uh, 10 degrees, uh, which gradually rises, that's good land, gradually rises to just below 25 uh, degrees in July. Good. Uh, that's here, sorry. Uh, falling too rough. So you're talking about, so what you've done is you picked out London and you describe what happens to London over the year. That's good. Then you go on to New York. Uh, he even colder days, so you're comparing New York now with London in January, it's good, just below 5%, then it increases modest, modestly to around 8, uh, eight degrees in March before, uh, rising significantly. This is good language, you're already around 7 uh, by using things like rising significantly to just uh, below 30, per, uh, 30 uh, degrees in July. Subsequently, the days are good cohesive device. You're linking. Subsequently, the days become gradually colder month on month. Or month by month would be better, reaching around 5 degrees in December. So this is good. This is descriptive. And it's talking about um, you're, looking, you're taking each city one by one, and it's good. Uh, but here you get a little bit uh, bogged down here, and uh, lose your way a little bit. You say in the opposite, um, you, that's that's poorly expressed. So um, I would say here, on the other hand, uh, conversely, uh, so, um, however, something that shows a contrast, but not in the opposite. The, the thing about in the opposite is opposite is directly opposite. So black and white, um, big and small, they have to be accurate when we're talking about temperatures it's not exactly the, the mirror image although it's close to being that so I would just use a contrasting language like on the other hand or conversely would be a lovely uh, language uh, word to use when we're going to talk about Sydney because the temperature is around 25 degrees in January so it's a huge difference from what we know of our northern hemisphere cities and remain steady that's good remain steady for two months before dropping to just over 15 degrees in July and then rising steadily uh, until December up up until yeah up until December to around 25 yeah so it's good just a little bit of accuracy there so the oh, generally it's, it's good and it's around seven um, you would just lose a little bit here in terms of the language. Uh, then you move on to looking at the table. So the table represents the average number of... Now, OK, this is redundant. This is redundant. We don't need this at all. Uh, you've written it because you go, OK, we're well, moving on. I'm talking about that. You said that you didn't have much time to plan it. 
uh, no, or no time to plan it and no, no time to proofread so you've basically restated the question here so you would get you would get no extra marks for this whole sentence you can just say moving on to the table in respect of the table in respect of the number of hours of sunshine in respect of so that's how I would introduce it uh, in the three we can see that London has um, okay so you, you only yeah okay only 1000 we know it's the least of the three but we don't know it if it's very low in terms of other cities we just don't know that the only information we've got is that it's um, half as much more you know less than half of the total number of hours for Sydney and even more of a difference between London and New York and this is uh, uh, inaccurate in terms of grammar you would say uh, has only 1180 hours annual sunshine or if you wanted to use annually as an uh, adverb you would say sunshine annually strangely yeah 1180 hours sunshine annually not annually in sunshine is a grammatical error there um, yeah you've got some synonyms here. bright hours yeah so bright is a simple synonym for uh, sunny uh, most sunny moments is a little bit casual periods would have been a better word and I would say enjoy the, uh, the most sunny periods with over not which is over with a grammatical error with with over 2500 hours per year okay if we uh, bring up the criteria so what I'm showing on the screen now is from my book which shows you uh, a, a, a teacher's guide for the task one writing criteria and let's focus here on the band seven because with this is where you are about band seven sometimes you get a little bit less sometimes you might get a little bit more but you're aiming for 7.5 overall um, and I su su would suggest that this is no more than a seven for task one you've uh, clearly presented in highlights uh, features uh, could could have extended some more uh, you you basically answered the question, so yeah, it'd be a strong seven for for task for task achievement. You have some cohesive devices in there. Uh, words like subsequently uh, is a, is an example of how you've used cohesive devices to link and connect what you were saying, and that there's a prog progression throughout. The only thing you fell down on, I felt, was was reintroducing the question in your final paragraph um, lexical resources well this is where you could improve I think maybe you are a little bit lacking here at the moment in terms of the IELTS 7 plus language vocabulary that you could use uh, so bright was okay as a synonym for sunny but we could use words like co conversely to show a contrast uh, different information uh, and other words that I described so discrepancy instead of difference would be lovely language that you could use uh, they mean the same thing uh, but difference is sort of five and six a discrepancy is seven and eight you know it's higher it's higher level language if you if you know but I always say don't use words that you don't know so if you don't know if you don't know how to spell or use discrepancy don't use it um, but that's what I'm saying that, that's where you could make slight improvements in terms but it's just accuracy as well and that's what we come with grammatical array direct so I've pointed out a few er little errors um, I think you're very good in in your grammatical structures you make very few errors uh, and that's why I say it's in the sevens good control of grammar and punctuation punctuation is fine but that little thing about the colon so that one little trick when you're introducing a list uh, not a lot of uh, students of English would, would, would know that a colon could be used to introduce a list so three major cities colon duh, duh, and duh. so when you've got three or more things it's a way of introducing a list within the body of a sentence you don't separate it out in bullet points although you do say that in some see that sometimes in report writing however this is uh, IELTS so you need to have good structure and paragraphs so yeah I'd give this seven but certainly no more